Hey, it's Michael Schellenberger from Environmental Progress. In September, Energy Secretary Rick Perry asked federal regulators to financially reward coal plants for keeping the electric grid resilient so it can survive big storms like the ones that hit Texas and Florida. So much of the controversy over Perry's proposed resiliency rule has focused on its support for coal plants that most observers have overlooked how it would also benefit nuclear power plants. As such, and however paradoxical it may seem, Perry's proposed resiliency rule could be the most important policy for protecting clean air and the climate in recent decades. To understand why this is, consider the fact that over half of America's nuclear power plants are losing money and are at risk of being replaced by fossil fuels, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance. And about half of those at-risk plants are in the regions that would benefit from the proposed rule. As such, the resiliency rule could prevent emissions from rising the equivalent of adding 20 to 40 million new cars to the road, depending on whether the nuclear plants are replaced by natural gas, coal, or a mixture of both. Environmentalists are understandably concerned that the proposed grid resiliency rule would extend a lifeline to coal plants that would otherwise be closed and replaced by renewables. But those concerns are misplaced. The vast majority of the decline in coal generation over the last decade came not from closing coal plants, but rather from reducing the amount of time that they're operating, and also thus generating pollution. Moreover, coal generation has mostly been replaced with generation from cheap and abundant natural gas from fracking, not from solar and wind. And while natural gas plants produce about half the carbon emissions of coal, they still produce large quantities of emissions compared to nuclear power. A far greater risk is that the nuclear plants that could otherwise operate for another 20, 40, or more years will be forced to close and be replaced by fossil fuels. Some have objected to this proposed rule for being the kind of market-distorting subsidy people say we want to avoid. And to some extent, they're correct. But electricity markets are already some of the most regulated in the world. And in recent years, state and federal policies have rewarded both renewables and nuclear for producing low-carbon power. Meanwhile, the vast majority of states with clean energy mandates exclude nuclear power from qualifying for what is effectively a subsidy. In the end, there remain many uncertainties about what the final rule will and will not do to help coal. What's certain is that the rule would offer a lifeline to nuclear plants, our only reliable source of low carbon electricity. And that should make it enough for anyone concerned about reducing carbon emissions to support. Hey, thanks for listening. If you have questions or comments about the proposed resiliency rule, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. And please consider a donation to Environmental Progress. Your support helps to keep us fiercely independent and incredibly effective in saving our most important source of clean energy.